Hello, my squishies! Oh, Morgan, you're already here. Hello. Um, let me know. Can someone give me a shout in the comments if you can't hear me or if you can't see me? But welcome to the Caledonian Wool Company's Belt Along. And this month we are doing, let's see if I can point to it. Ah, oh, no, it's in the screen up there. <laughs> the Isle of Arran. So before we get started, there's a couple of things that you need to know about felting if you've not done it before. Everything that you need is in your kit and I'll walk you through all the different bits just now before we get on with the felting. So you guys have done it before, bear with me for two seconds. So in your kit, you'll have a foam mat. So this is the mat that you want to felt onto. This protects your work surfaces and makes felting easier. You've also got needles and a needle holder. So these are your needles. They are long and sharp. And if you stab yourself, they do hurt. So please try and avoid stabbing yourself if at all possible. It's always a really good idea to count your needles in and out at the beginning and end of every project because they can get lost. And if they break, dispose of them carefully. Along with your needles, you've got this little needle holder. And what this does, it makes it easier to hold needles if you're using a single needle. And to do this, oh, there we go. You've got a little plug in one side. So you pull that plug out, pop the needle across with the hook of the needle on the smaller end of the plug. And it's just sitting in the groove. And then you pop it back in. And that makes it easier. Let's see, you can see the end of that needle there. It makes it easier to hold the needle. I'll show you that one more time. So it comes like this. You pull out the wee plug, make sure that the smaller end is where the hook on the end of the needle goes. Your needle just sits in the groove and then it pops back in. You don't have to use this, but it does make it easier. You can also hold multiple needles at the same time, which is what I normally do. So I'll hold them without the needle holder and I'll just stab away. Hello Rona! Um, so yeah, so you can use them with or without needle holder. The needle holder just makes it easier to hold it. Also in your kit, you've got your frame and I'll show you how to use that once we've got a little bit of a picture going. You've got your... So this material is called pre-felt so it's Shetland wool that's been lightly felted and I've drawn on the outline of design for you. So this is colour by numbers. We're going to just fill in the colours as we go. So that's everything in the kit. I guess we just start getting felted. Oh no, one more thing. Can't forget this. The most important bit, the colour. So this is wool tops, sometimes called roving. So it's come off of the sheep. All in this kit I think is Shetland come off the Shetland sheep, it's been brushed and it's been dyed and that's all that's happened to it. So when you're working with this roving or tops, there's a few little tricks that you need to know. So it's all nice in a row for you. And when you want to work with it, we tend to work with little bits at a time. So you pull out just the tiniest amounts and work with those little bits. But to do that, there's a couple of things you pitfalls shall we say you can fall into if you have your hands too close together you can't pull any out because you're holding on to both ends of the same hair basically oh Morgan if you are missing one give me a shout we'll see how it goes it might be hiding because there is only slivers of some but give me a shout if you are missing one where was I? I've completely forgotten. Oh, yeah. So if you're holding both ends, you can't pull it out because you've got both. And if there's any twist in it, you can't pull it out because the twist holds it together. Even if you have your hands far apart, if it's twisted, it's not going to pull. So have your hands nice and far apart and just gently pull. So, let's get felting. 
So we're going to, as usual, start at the furthest back and work our way down to the front. Doing the further, so we're layering up in order of distance really. So we're going to start with the blue. So this is the lightest of the blue. And we're going to use that for the sky. Is it this one, Morgan? One or two? Comment in the comments. And I'll get that posted out to you. So I'm going to start with the sky. We can put a relatively thick layer on. And when you're stabbing, because this is just stabbing by numbers, I like to call it, you want to stab straight up and down or straight to the side. Never want to bend your needle as you're stabbing because that will result in that will result in a broken needle. If you're watching this, oh, excellent, Morgan, that's brilliant. Um, I will get that posted out to you though. If you're watching this afterwards and you can't see the comments, I am having a conversation that you can't really see because the comments disappear after this is live. But yeah. So we're just going to block in the colours just now. We're not going to stab too much. We're just going to put the colours in place. And then we're going to go over it once all the colours are in and put in the detail and finalise it. So I want to kind of keep that shape there but go right down to the line. There we go. So that is very lightly blocked in. So you can see it's still quite fluffy. It's just a few stabs holding it in because again, I want to block everything out before we sort of finalize the picture. Because one of the wonderful things about needle felting is that you, if you don't like what you've done, you can literally, especially at this stage, just pull it up and then start again and move it about. Nothing is fixed yet. And even once it's been relatively well felted in, if you're, if you're, um, <laughs> hi mum, uh, if, if you're uh, determined, you can pull it out again. So as you'll know, you'll see here as well, I've gone over the lines. So when we put it in the frame, the frame is not always going to be an exact size to the outline. So it's better to go a little bit over so you don't get any white gaps at the edge. Cool. So I'm happy with that. We will go back onto it later. So don't worry if you're, if I'm going a little bit fast just now, we're just blocking and then we'll come back and tidy everything up. And uh, even though I said, I'm <laughs> right at the beginning, we're working from the back to the front. I'm going to ignore that slightly and work on this beach because that beach is underneath the sea almost, if that makes any sense to anybody. The waves are lapping over it. So the this, this sea, the beach is underneath. So I've got this lovely sandy colour that we're going to fill in the beach for. So this is the base of the beach and then we're going to work over it in the lighter colour. So just at this bottom little corner here. We're putting in the nice beach. Now this scene is a little bit south of here. It's south of Glasgow in fact. It is the view of the Isle of Arran from West Kilbride. Now Arran is a wonderful island that I haven't made it to yet but I am fully planning on going there. And the mountain that we're doing that you can see this interesting shaped mountain is called Goatfell which is a really cool name for a mountain. So I've laid down a small layer of the lightest sandy colour. 
Again, it's not totally fixed in place, it's just lightly felted in. We'll go over it later. It is! Well done, Morgan. I don't know how high it is off the top of my head, though. But it's, it's not too short, I don't think. So we're going to get the lighter brown. No, sorry, the darker brown. This lovely dark sandy colour. And aiming at first to outline where the water is going to lap it. So you're wanting a fairly, not too strong. And again, let's see how tiny, tiny little bits that we're using just now to sort of semi outline where the edge of the waves are going to lap over. So that'll give the waves a little bit of depth. And you can see how I'm laying it down, but I'm also, I can pull it open. Now, so far, we've been layering everything horizontally when we lay it down, because um, I like the effect. But there are different ways, and later on we'll do different things where you lay it down in a different way. But we'll get this little bit of shadow in there and taking a little bit further down. So again, this is like tiny amounts I'm laying down just to build up the colour. And you can see here this I've got a little bit that's kind of going down the way and I don't want that. So I'm going to just gently pull it and lay it the way I want it to go. Because I really want this sand to be horizontal. The sort of bars of sand where the waves have been lapping on it. And don't go too thick just now because we can go over it later on and putting in different colours. Ah! 874 metres! That's not bad. That's goat fell. Uh, so yeah, um, adding in different areas of colour will change the way bits you've already done look. So that's why it's really good to block the whole thing before going in. So I've got my little, little light bits. And now I'm going to pop in the C. So starting with this, so this lightest of the, no, middly blue. So darker than the sky, but only by just a tiny amount. So it could almost, you could use the sky if, say, somebody didn't have one of the missing ones. I'm so sorry. Um, can use that for the sea. So I'm going to lay this over the whole sea to give it depth and then put a little bit of dark on top this time. Sometimes I do dark first, but I think I want the sea to be lighter. I might change my mind, take it off and do it the other way. But just now I'm going to make the sea all the light blue. And again, this time I'm still just laying it across. And you can put some of the sky blue in right at the bottom to lighten it up where we're going to start putting the waves. That's the word I'm looking for. Put the waves in. So a little bit more of this blue because my horizon line is not quite straight. And now is also a perfect time. So we've got a few bits in. And before we go much further, as you're felting, the act of felting is pushing the little hairs through this fabric that you're felting on, which means that they stick to the mat below. So every so often it's a really good idea, and ignore how messy my mat is, uh, to pull it so you can see all the little fluffy hairs coming back through the back and at this stage as well if anything's not straight you can wiggle it up and can give it a quick smoosh and it'll give you a really good idea of how it's looking so at the moment this is totally fluffy uh, let's make sure I'm straight totally fluffy and wonderful okay so we've done that and now I'm going to take the darker blue 
and I'm just going to put this darker blue on the top half of the C. So the side that's closest to where the island is going to be. I'm just going to felt that down. So that'll give us a sense of depth and distance. I'm going to make a wee gap because it's all smooshing together. There we go. I'm going to take tiny little straggles and lay them just giving the appearance of tiny waves coming closer. But you wanted to keep that blue mostly near the back. Now I'm going to go over it a wee bit and then we could either do, so we could either work on the island or nah, let's make, let's make this magic fun happen. So in the kits you've also got this wool, ah this isn't Shetland, this is Chibiot, um, that is, so this isn't technically tops, this is slivers because it's not as finely brushed, it's got more texture to it. And this makes great waves because of like the crinkly bits. So I'm going to pull out a tiny amount of this and you can see how, I don't know if, is it showing up on camera? Not quite, but there's tiny little neeps almost, little knotty bits that will just make lovely little wavy. The texture in this is perfect for waves. And so this is just going to be, so I've got my sand there got my C with the dark coming to lighter so I'm just going to outline along the edge of where the waves would hit the sand. Am I straight? There we go. And this as soon as I put it down it immediately just looks like C. I love it so much. So I'm just following this curve pulling it and stabbing it in. We can add more later because as you stab it in it'll slightly disappear but as soon as you put that down it doesn't show up quite as well on camera as it is in real life. You've just got this foamy froth of wonderfulness that just makes it look. So I can see I want to put a little bit more dark just under there but I'm very happy with that just now. Okay, and now it's island time. So we've got, I've gone a bit rogue this time with the colours, with the two new colours. So these lovely turquoisey greeny blues to give the impression that it's a distant island and it's a slightly misty day. It's really nice. So again, I'm going to uh, take the lighter of the two greens and I'm going to lay that down as a base. So for this one again, it's laying it down horizontally and filling in. And don't worry if at first the island kind of blends in. When we put a, light, a white line across, it will stand out a lot more. And we're also going to add in some shading to the bottom as well. So you can make the island quite thick. and making that really distinctive point on the top. So to do that, I'm going to fold up a little bit and then kind of plonk it down, but then let it go down and still blend into the rest. But once, as again, we're going to put the white at the bottom, we're also going to put white behind the island and that will really make it pop out because it might sort of fall in a little at the moment. 
So I'm just going to work slightly over the sky a little bit more now that I'm happy with the placement. Just fill that in a good wee bit. There we go. Now we're missing our shadow. So with the darker of the bluey greens, bluey greens, there's probably a technical name for this, the tiniest amount. And I'm not going to lay it down flat this time. I'm going to scrumple it slightly to give it a little bit of texture and movement. And I'm going to lay it down just along the bottom, so where it hits the water. I'm going to lay that down there because it's giving the impression of possibly slight trees or maybe a little settlement. Don't know if I'm assuming Aaron has a settlement on it, but the trees in the foreground. It gives it a bit of height on the island. Again, scrumfling it up slightly. And now we're at that wonderful stage where most of the colour is in. We've got to do the clouds and stuff, but it looks a bit messy. It's a bit scary. It doesn't look quite as you envisioned it would or as the picture on the outside of the box looks. But don't worry, this is perfectly normal. We've got plenty of time left and it's all going to come together, I promise. I'm just going to work over a little bit and I think it might be cloud time. So with the clouds, it's the fluffy stuff again because it makes not only wonderful sea but also wonderful clouds. And so I'm going to grab bits of this and just small bits. I'm going to outline the island so that will make it pop. So don't completely outline it. You can leave little gaps and blue bits showing through but try and cover that sort of area from there to there-ish with white and being sort of careful to get to pull it along the edge of the island because that just makes it look like the clouds are just touching the top of the island and I'm letting it kind of go where it wants to go oh this also does this one's slightly more rustic so it will have bits of uh, vegetable matter we call it so little twigs and things included in it there we go there's another bit of moss so it is tiny amounts that we're popping in here it's amazing how little you need to make such a big difference and again I'm going to do a tiny bit on this side you can let it overlap in places and have darker bits and lighter bits. And then I'm going to pop some little, again, little clouds higher up. So if we start little, it's super easy to add more later if you want to. But it's better to start just subtle. So look how tiny, you can barely even see it, tiny the amount I'm popping in is. I'm letting these just kind of sit and go where they want to go. And as I've been taught, in nature stuff tends to come in uneven numbers. So threes and fives rather than twos and fours. So if you're going to put in, say, I think I'm going to do three clouds. make this top one a little bit bigger there we go so that little bit of white there just pops the island from the background and then one last thing we have to do with this white is we're going to do a white line of the shore of the distant island and this is going to be thinnest tiniest line so I'm pulling it out and then even so I'm pulling it out thin let's see 
let's do this on the dark there and then twisting it slightly and as I pop it in trying to get it between the two and again pulling it and twisting it you can let it have slightly bigger patches and smaller patches because the sea the shore is not always even it does change in places There we go. So now it's time for the finessing and fiddling because most of the colours are there. Oh, before we do that, let's try it in the frame. So I uh, also pull it off the Mac because it's been a while. So when I'm trying it in the frame, I always like to do it off the mat because it's just a lot easier. So your frame will be closed up. So you just want to open it out to the fullest. Pop the inner ring down, sorry about the noise in this, and then I'm going to lay it over. I'm going to feel for the edge of my frame and lay it down and feel that it's completely covering. Take, I'll open it a little bit further, take this, kind of line it, I'm going to line it up with the horizon being straight and then pop it down. And then if you if this was finishing it, I would just screw it on tight. But that's it. Ooh, face that way. That's it in the frame. That's a really good idea to do this because you can see how it's going to look when it's finished. You can see if there's bits you want to change, if there's bits that you've missed, how you like the layout to be. So especially at this stage. And when I was doing the initial design for this one, I did the design bigger and then tried it with more sky to see if I wanted the island to be further down or I also tried it with more sand and put the island further up so you've got those two options there but I'm happy with that layout at the moment oh, and let's straighten me back up Go. Now let's get back in frame. Okay, so let's do some finessing. So I'm gonna just go over the whole thing for a minute or two, just stabbing viciously to try and felt it in nicely. And this just lets the colours meld together. I think I'm gonna work on that island a wee bit more. I'm just going to go over the whole thing and felt it down and paying extra attention to any bits that aren't felted in. This is a good arm workout this little bit. So I want to work a little bit more into the sea and the island. And it is a good idea to, although I have my hand on my mat, I don't even need to do that really. You can just stab away and then you're not going to stab your hand, which is nice. You'll see it starting to sort of start to look kind of finished, not finished, but look more together. So a couple of things I want to do is I'm going to take the white and I'm going to put in a tiny extra wave in this lower bit. So although we outlined the wave, I'm going to put a tiny, tiny one. Oh, fluff everywhere. Just a little bit higher up. Just there. And that just gives a little, little extra detail. Might even make it a tiny bit bigger. I'm going to put in some more of the lighter brown outlining. So like I said before, um, you can pull up your felt. So I'm going to pull up that white just a tiny bit. 
put a little bit of the darker underneath and then felt it back down and that gives that yeah that's a lot better gives that more of an outline there because the water so imagine the sea is coming is going out just now the sand closest to where the water is will be wet and will look darker I think I want to add in just a touch more all over. I really love this sandy colour. So last month's felt along that we did was a little bit of a hard one. I'm hoping this month you guys are going to enjoy this one it's going to be more relaxing shall we say less of a challenge less of a, a climb up a mountain and more of a walk along a beach I'm popping in a little bit more white on my outline just because I love it so much I love this sort of sea foam effect it gives I'm going to put a little bit more dark in the back there. So this is just the playing, experimenting stage. That dark, as soon as you pop that dark in, it just gives it so much depth. And, or it could even be the shadow of the mountain in the distance. I'm gonna pop Although I just put dark down, I am going to put some light on top of it. So this is the, oh, that, I think it was the wrong one, the middle of the blues. Just, because again, it's layering colours, but those little tiny speckles just show the light dancing across the waves. Am I getting awfully romantic? Light dancing on the waves. Uh, but it does. There we go. I'm also going to put in some more tiny, so I, we did the white that's outlining the beach. But I'm going to pop in tiny little higher ones. as well just to give either highlights or a little give some depth to that area how are we all doing in the comments is everybody coping anybody panicking anyone panicking and running away hopefully not does anybody want me to go over anything that i've gone too fast Give me a shout. I'm putting a bit of extra white, just highlighting behind the mountain. I'm going to put in a little bit more dark. And I think my mountain top is not as prominent as I would like it to be because goat fell is a very distinctive mountain. As my mum will testify when I sent her photos of the design and she went, that's not the right shape. There we go, and outlining around there. How's that look? That looks a bit too pointy. I'm gonna you can pull it out and stretch things at this stage as well, which will even things out. There we go, that's a bit better. I'm gonna pull this off. And so if your needle marks when you whenever you pull it off, I also like to give it a good smoosh and that sort of evens out any needle marks. 
and gives you a nice idea of how it's looking. So I think I want to play with this white a little more and make it a little bit higher up so it's not as much of a defining line if that makes sense. more of a graduation of a sort of one of those lovely days where it's all misty in the distance. And a little bit in the middle. There we go. Yeah, doesn't show up on camera I don't think quite as well as it does in real life. In real life, yeah, I could say this and it could look horrible, but in real life it looks wonderful. You just have to believe me. There you go, so I'm going to felt over it all again, I think. I don't like that lighter blue that I put in. I'm wondering if I can pull that out. Yeah, I can and just have that C as the mid blue. Yeah, that's better. And now I'm going to work a little bit on the hill. Again, tiny tiny amounts, just putting in tiny shadows higher up and giving it that little bit of depth. And I reserve the right to take this off if it's too dark, but I'm going to go down to one needle for this. There we go. That just adds little bitties. Little shadows and highlights. Perfect. Okay, it's time to have a good felting over. Oh, so I've not mentioned this yet, but as we're going along and you've, you're fairly happy with the design, you're happy with how everything is, it's a really good idea to hold it up, look at it from a distance, look at it upside down, take a photograph of it and look at the photograph, give yourself a fresh perspective on it and see how it's looking. Or if you're not liking it yet, then definitely do that. Have a look at it from different angles and it might shout out to you as to what you want to change. It's also a really good idea to, although we're going to get it sort of semi finished tonight I'd recommend not framing it yet but coming back tomorrow or in a couple of days then looking at it again deciding if there's anything else that you want to change about it if not perfect frame it put it up but sometimes sort of sleeping on it will give you a nice fresh perspective That'll give you a chance to have another good felt. Let's pull that up and see how it's looking. So from here, I'm super happy just now. I need to work on my one, because when you felt stuff in more, some things will disappear and some things will, <laughs> some things will pop out. I feel your pain, Rona. It is the getting the peak right is the hardest. A couple of things. So make sure that you've got the white behind it so it's not the blue on blue. That's the first. I'm actually going to put in some more there. That's the first thing. And then second, because it is a very distinctive pointy peak. So we've got, I'm actually going to wiggle it a little. So you've got kind of a flat, 
a flat base that goes along. There's a dome and then the dome has a little point on the top. So to get the point, you can completely, so I've taken a tiny bit, twisted it slightly, and then I'm going to wrap it around my finger and that creates a end that's folded over. Hey, I heard that, Mum. It's totally that pointy. I've looked, I've seen, um, and then you can felt that in and that gives it a point. I'm also, now that Mum has commented that it's not as pointy, I'm going to make mine slightly less pointy. So I folded that over and I'm just bringing down the legs to make it So Rona, listen to my mum. She's uh, the knowledge on this. So there, that's that's slightly less pointy. Still, I think actually, yeah, that looks better now. I will agree with you guys. It needs to be slightly less pointy. The fights in the comments. Right. What was I doing before that? Before I got distracted. <laughs> oh yeah, I was going to put in a little bit more white because some of the white had disappeared when I was felting it in. Because it can do that, you can suddenly lose features because um, you've felted so hard that all of the colour has gone right the way through. I do that especially if I'm doing animals and I'm felting really hard into their... this sounds terrible, if I'm felting really hard on their eye, <laughs> their eye can just, especially with sheep, will just disappear because it'll go right the way through. And if you are unhappy with your mountain, you can pull it off and start afresh. Even at this stage. And also your mountain can be any shape you want it to be. It doesn't specifically have to be goat fell. It can be any mountain. It's your chosen mountain, the mountain that sings to your soul. Awesome. Right. Oh, I'm squinty. Looking at it. So I'm looking at it in the monitor, which is really handy because it gives me another perspective on it. I think I'm pretty happy. I might put a little bit. I'm worried now that I'm going to start fiddling just for fiddling's sake. So maybe I should just stop. I'm tempted to put a tiny bit of this dark green. Oh, I might change my mind on this. Put a tiny bit of. Oh, that dark green just, again, super tiny. In the sea, I reserve the right to take this out. What do we think? Just the tiniest bit. So I'm leaving a, definitely leaving a gap. But am I leaving a gap? Yeah, I like that. That tiny bit that just gives. And we're talking maybe 10, 10 strands of hair. There we go. That just gives it that little, it's these little tiny, tiny touches at the end that make it 
from a flattish thing to suddenly popping and going, oh my God, it's 3D. I really want to put more, uh, <laughs> more, <laughs> more waves in just because I love the waves. Yeah, I think this wave needs to be bigger. How's your peak doing now, Rona? I would advise always listening to my mum's advice. There we go, that's better. I'm going to build up this. Oh, that's got some glue in it as well. My fibre always ends up in a messy, messy pile at the side. Uh, I'm going to build up this white a little bit more so it's more 3D almost. Oh, too much, too much. No, too much in there. I want more at this side, and less at that side. There we go. So it's like it's going away in the distance. Yep. Just put, I know I've just put the white down, but touches of blue on top of it. Yep, doesn't show up as much on camera, I don't think. But that does look really nice when you're able to look up close. Excellent. Right, what time? Oh, we've still got not even an hour yet. Hopefully you guys are keeping up. <laughs> Rona, yours are always lovely. Oh, turning my lights off. Right, I'm going to felt over it for a wee bit and then decide if I want to do any more tweaking but I'm pretty happy it's a nice landscape this it really reminds me of summer days like the ones we're having just now I just want to go for a swim which I am doing oh stop turning the lights off with your feet which I am doing uh in about half an hour I'm gonna go for a swim. Woo! Because it is roasting today. That seems fairly well felted in. So again this isn't it finished. I am gonna leave it overnight and finish it tomorrow morning. So that finishing for me is just stabbing over it a good few more times for about maybe 10 or so minutes putting in any tweaks that I think although I'm fairly happy with it putting in any tweaks and then framing it oh so that's one other thing that I haven't mentioned but I'm going to mention when I pop it in the frame Yeah, unless anybody's got any questions. I think it's framing time. Might pop a little. I think I'm losing a little bit there. And do I want to pop in a little bit more white? Yeah. Let's do a tiny, so this what I'm doing just now is I'm kind of anchoring one or two hairs down and then pulling along and then pulling along. So that leaves just tiny hairs that you can then felt bits of them in. There we go. And gives it a really tiny, tiny lines of just a few hairs. I 
give some highlights in that darker area. Do I want to pop? Let's hold it up. Hmm, a little bit. Oh, put it in camera. A little bit more dark there as well. I know it seems silly doing dark and light, but it shows shadows and highlights and gives you some really interesting depths. Is there anything that I've forgotten to say? Only that this should be fun. Everything that you make, I'm always, everybody, I'm always impressed with. And as long as you enjoy it, then I'm happy. Okay, I'm going to pop this in a frame, I think. Let's see how it looks. So when you're finished, and this is you coming back, say tomorrow, you're ready to put it in your frame, line it up correctly where you want it to be. Straighten it up. Pop it in. Tighten this right up. tight as it will go as long as it's straight and you're happy with the placement if you're not which I'm not it's a little bit squinty I'm going to tight un loosen it that's the word untighten is not a word apparently um loosen it up I'm gonna scooch it around a wee bit so it looks uneven now this end's gonna pull in and even up and then when you hang it on the wall as well you've got play to make it even or not even and you can also wiggle around bits but once you're happy with it and it's nice and tight all you need to do is take a pair of scissors and chop off this extra at the back so between the two wooden sides chop it off. I'm just in this case because I'm going to go back and do it tomorrow. I'm just going to hide it. But you can chop it off and then you have, in theory, a beautiful finished picture. If anybody has any questions please give me a message. But yeah, congratulations guys and we'll see. Let's see how it compares to the original yeah I think my island's a bit bigger but I really like this bigger island on this one they both make me very happy awesome so I'm just gonna finish this off with a picture with all the felt looking pretty Ta-da! Oh, thank you, Morgan. I can't wait to see... Oh, yes. So I cannot wait to see everybody's on Facebook. There's a Facebook group for these felt-alongs. Um, so if you... The link will be in the description. So if you pop onto the Facebook, I love seeing photographs. I can't wait for tonight's photographs. I'm going to be so proud of you all. Um, and if you have any questions about anything, pop it in the Facebook group or in the comments below. I really appreciate it. If you, this is the YouTube thing, if you give me a like and a subscribe and comment how much you've enjoyed it, how many times you've stabbed yourself. But yeah, it's been a brilliant night. We've made the Isle of Arran. Have a wonderful evening. I'm going to go and jump in the river because it is so warm today. Awesome. Thank you guys. <laughs>